Hi friend, are you stress eating? Are you familiar with food cravings while you're focused on your coaching business and maybe feeling nervous, stressed or even anxious? Well, perhaps you're about to contact a potential client or get your webinar ready or post on social media. And then I know that sometimes I feel the urge to open the fridge and grab the butter, to put on a thick slice of bread or grab a candy in the pantry while I'm letting the dog out or refilling a bottle in the kitchen. Well, it's important to recognize that overeating is not a random behavior. We're not overeating because we're crazy. We're overeating because it serves a purpose. Our brain is always having good intentions for us, for survival, and it presents us with a strategy, overeating. Today, let's explore this pattern. And it's important to know that we tend to turn to food as a way to numb or cope with difficult, intense emotions, because then when we're aware of it, when we're aware of that pattern, we can accept it, expect it, and then create a strategy. Because I believe that indeed there, our brain has very good intentions for us. We turn to food, we, we want to numb ourselves when we're about to do something that maybe appears a little bit scary to us because we're looking for emotional comfort. That's the first thing. When we want to numb our emotions, it's because we're potentially looking for emotional comfort. And notice that the foods that we often turn to can be high in sugars, fats, salt, etc. They release the feel-good chemicals in the brain such as dopamine. So it makes perfect sense that we turn to that kind of food, the bread and butter, the cookie, the candy, because they alleviate negative emotions, right? So that's the first thing. We're looking for emotional comfort. It makes perfect sense that we turn to food when we're feeling a bit nervous or maybe anxious, when we're about to do something that seems big to us, like preparing a webinar, contacting a client, etc. We also turn to food as a way to distract ourselves, right? It's a means of distraction from uncomfortable emotions, right? We've talked about nervousness, fear, anxiety, maybe other things, right? So when we turn to food as a distraction, it provides a temporary relief. We escape from our emotions. And I like to use the analogy of the glass. When a glass is empty, imagine, picture your stomach being an empty glass, and if you put your finger on the rim, then you will notice that the sound is very, very clear. It's very strong, right? It's because the stomach is empty, right? There's nothing in it, so the sound is very important. It's the very same with our emotions. When the stomach is empty, then we feel our emotions a lot. But when we fill the glass with water, when we fill the stomach with food, then all of a sudden it lessens the intensity of our emotions. So it makes perfect sense that we try to avoid, escape, find relief in food when we're having those emotions that we think are big and that we don't want to feel, which makes perfect sense. That's the second uh, way, that's the second reasons, reason why we numb ourselves with food, to distract ourselves. And the third reasons why we turn to food to avoid negative emotions, unpleasant emotions, is also because we have associations, emotional associations with some food. Remember, as a child, you probably have some positive memories or positive experiences with some particular food. So some foods act as emotional support. From They, they come from childhood, all right? So it makes perfect sense that we want to recreate those positive feelings and soothe ourselves in times of distress, even if we are grown-ups. For me, for instance, I think of chocolate this way, right? So chocolate was something that my, my mom would offer, especially the pain au chocolat. She would offer a pain au chocolat when I was really in distress as a child, even though it was exceptional, but that was really what was going on. And I know, I've noticed that she's doing the same thing with my children, all right? When they're not feeling very well, Pain chocolate is the solution. So it makes perfect sense that I've associated, you know, those positive feelings with the chocolate, in particular, the pain chocolate, right? So it's really important to be aware of that so that we can actually, as I said, accept it, expect it, and then decide, is this, is this really what I want? Or is there something uh, different that would serve me better? 
what I want us to do today is examine what's going on in our brain when in that split second, in that moment, when we turn to food. So a few examples that I've given you are what I've heard from my uh, clients or what I've noticed for myself is that, oh, I'm going to do something that feels a bit challenging. I'm feeling a certain emotion and I don't really want to feel that way. So all of a sudden I find myself in the kitchen refilling my uh, cup of tea, for instance, and oh, what a great idea. There's chocolate in the kitchen. And so my brain will offer me that story that this is the solution. This is very important right now. This is really what matters most. And really, here's what's going on. So we're having those circumstances, this situation. I'm preparing a webinar on celebrate your way to food freedom. And I'm feeling a bit nervous about this, right? And then I find myself in the kitchen, right? Taking, um, having some tea, preparing some tea, brewing some tea. And my brain is telling me, oh, it doesn't matter right now when I'm thinking of the chocolate and I'm thinking about having some chocolate, my brain gives me the thought, it doesn't matter right now. And when I'm thinking that thought about the chocolate, then I feel carefree, right? I feel a form of freedom, which is woo, right? And because I'm thinking it doesn't matter right now. And when I'm feeling carefree, what I've noticed, and I'm inviting you to question also what you're doing when you feel carefree, because maybe you also have this very common thought, which is, oh, it doesn't matter right now. When I feel carefree, I know that for myself, I tend to stop working on my webinar. It all of a sudden, you know, gets deleted from my brain. But on the contrary, I focus or I hyper focus on the chocolate. That's the only thing that I can think of. Of course, I eat it immediately and I don't think about anything else, especially what my body is going to experience in the near future or my goal of maybe being tip top shape for my 50th birthday. And I only focus on the present and on my sensations and the, the presence of the chocolate in my mouth, melting in my mouth. That's all I'm doing. But while I'm doing this, while I'm having this behavior, remember, it's because I'm thinking, well, it doesn't matter right now, and I'm feeling carefree, and I'm eating the chocolate without thinking about anything else. What I'm creating for myself is that I add matter to my body, but also maybe I don't mean myself or my project, my long-term projects matter as much, right? And once more, I'm not creating this result of adding matter to my body, of not making myself and my projects matter as much. I'm not creating that, those results because I'm preparing a webinar. I'm not creating that results of adding matter to my body or not making myself and my projects matter because I'm feeling nervous. I'm not creating that result of adding matter to my body and not making myself matter and my projects matter because there's chocolate in the kitchen. No doesn't make any sense, right? But I'm adding matter to my body because I'm thinking oh, it doesn't matter right now, right? I'm not uh, making myself and my projects matter right now because all of a sudden I'm deciding to think that the chocolate is, the, having the chocolate doesn't matter right now, right? It's my decision to think having some chocolate doesn't matter right now. This is what's actually leading me to adding matter to my body and to dismissing the real matter, me and my projects, right? And it's coming from that emotion, carefree, that I'm creating for myself because the carefreeness, <laughs> the carefreedom maybe, is not coming from the webinar, from my nervousness or from the fact that there's chocolate. I'm the one creating the carefree emotion in my body because I'm choosing to think it doesn't matter right now if I'm having some chocolate, right? So I'm in control of that thought, I'm in control of that emotion of carefree, I'm in control of my behavior, eating the chocolate, and so of course I'm in control of this result that I'm creating for myself, which is adding matter to my body and not deciding that I do matter, that my projects matter, right? So if I'm the one deciding to create all this, the thought, the feeling, the actions, and then the result, it means that I'm also the one deciding to change that. So I could be choosing a different thought instead of it doesn't matter right now. I could be choosing uh, to uh, feel a different emotion rather than carefree. I could be choosing to behave a different way than eating the chocolate, 
identify. And I could choose to create a different result rather than adding matter to my body, right? And so once we know that, once we've noticed that, that's always the first step, noticing, I can question that. And I can question in particular the thought, it doesn't matter right now, right? So here are three questions that you might want to ask yourself if you find yourself in a similar situation. The first one could be, why is it true that it doesn't matter right now? Because the brain believes something and we could choose to, you know, gaslight it or just pretend that, no, 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 it's not, it doesn't mean a thing. Choose to ignore it, right? But very often, this is linked to resistance. We don't want to see what's going on for the brain. We, instead of switching the light on, we'd rather stay in the dark. But very often that turns against us because, well, try walking in a dark room without hurting yourself. It doesn't work. So that's why it's preferable, according to me, of course, you may have a different opinion and that's all fine. But I think it's preferable to switch on the light and to really ask ourselves from a an honest perspective, we really want honest answers. Why is it true that it doesn't matter right now, right? And see what's coming up for you when you ask yourself this question. Why is it true that having a little piece of chocolate doesn't matter right now, right? Find your answers. Maybe there's one answer, maybe there are several, and see what they are. Maybe you want them, maybe you don't want them. Maybe it's a mixture of wanting those answers and not. But it's always good to know right? That's the first question. Why is it true that it doesn't matter right now? And then I like to ask myself the opposite question. Why is it tr not true that it does matter right now? Or why is it true that it does matter right now? Right? So find the opposite question. In what sense, in what way does it matter right now that I'm having this piece of chocolate? And then again, you're going to find one answer or several, but it's always good to know because your brain is a bit conflicted right now. You want the chocolate, but you don't want the repercussions of having the chocolate or the piece of bread or whatever your brain wants you to have, right? So it's always good to know what's in it for you, what's your brain offering you, and to really just see what's available for you, what's going on in your brain, so that then you can choose. If we don't see what's going on, of course we can't choose. We'll always be at the mercy of what our brain's offering us, but without you know, being able to decide. We'll, be, we'll still be on autopilot. So I'm really recommending that you really see why is that true that it doesn't matter right now or why is it true that it does matter right now, right? Those are the two first question, questions. The third question could be, what emotions is the food helping me avoid, right? Because we know we're preparing a webinar, we are about to reach out to a potential client, we are about to post something on social media or something else, obviously. And then all of a sudden, the chocolate appears in our brain, right? So it's probably a way to numb ourselves, as we said, for emotional comfort, because there's emotional association, because we want to distract ourselves. But why? Why are we trying to distract ourselves from what we're doing? What is the emotion? And maybe simply it could be nervousness, fear, anxiety, something else, right? But it's always good to know why we all of a sudden want some chocolate or something else and why do we think it's a solution? What is, what is the problem that it's supposed to solve, right? Then again, it's very good to know and that's exactly what I do with my clients. We focus on stress eating and we notice that they want to eat something because of stress or another emotion. And it's very good to know because we then can decrease the desire for the chocolate maybe or some, something else, but we can also decrease the stress or the anxiety or the fear that they're currently feeling. We can act on both sides of it. So good to do, right? So here are three questions you could ask yourself if you want to know more about what's going on really so that you can act on it. And then once you've done, gone through steps two, step two after noticing, questioning. The third step could be deciding. By deciding, I mean, as I said, that you could choose to think different thoughts than it doesn't matter right now, right? And here are a few thoughts that I'm thinking of. And of course, there's millions of other thoughts that you might want to think. So here are only three suggestions. If you have more, if you have questions about those, please reach out to me. DM me, send me a message at nscoaching.outlook.fr and I'd be happy to hear and to chat with you.
here are the, th the here's the first thought that I'm thinking of. It could be simply I'm thinking the thought it doesn't matter and that's okay. I'm just accepting that right this is the thought that I'm having doesn't mean a thing it's in my brain that's okay I'm thinking the thought and at the same time it helps us take a step back we are not believing it doesn't matter anymore because we're noticing that it's a thought I'm thinking the thought it doesn't matter and that's okay right? it's okay to have thoughts in our mind that's what it's for but we don't have to believe them that's where the power of this thought is the second thought you could choose to think is it doesn't matter and it also matters very much to me right so it's going back to what's true what's not true and really having both holding both at the same time yes it doesn't matter right now if i'm having a piece of chocolate but at the same time it does matter to me that's not really what i want for my future right and so embracing both helps you really reconcile the two sides of you that's very often we talk in terms of war or uh, conflict or uh, battle we're struggling with ourselves and so if we're just simply reconciling both sides wants the best for you but they seem to be very contradictory okay just holding that that fact uh, within you can actually bring peace to you so the thought could be it doesn't matter and it also matters very much to me right the third thought that i'm thinking of is i know i can change my mind whenever i want so it's really remembering that we choose our thoughts even though we may not know it or even if we have thoughts that are unconscious because they're running on a pilot but it's also so good to remember that i know i can change my mind whenever i want i can choose the sentences in my mind of course it may not be automatic but it's definitely a choice and our brain is so powerful that it's incredible it still blows my mind when i think of it how quickly I can change the way I feel because I'm choosing to think a different thought that I believe that I've built, crafted just for me, just for this particular instance, this particular situation, and that is going to have a very different outcome for me. Because if I'm thinking this thought, like I can, I know I can change my mind whenever I want, then I feel empowered. And then from that empowered place, I'm probably going to choose really what I do about the chocolate instead of reacting to the food craving, reacting to the urge of uh, having the chocolate. And then as a result, I'm going to change my mind, but also my life, right? Because I'm fully in control of what I'm doing. So that's what I have for you today as far as this little sentence that's so common and also so sneaky, it doesn't matter right now. And I'm really going to um, actually invite you to something else because I was giving you the example of me having a webinar, but it is actually true. I'm uh, hosting a webinar very soon. So if you're struggling with stress eating, I do have this upcoming webinar, or should I say an empowering and transformative opportunity just for you on Tuesday, the 11th of July, 2023 at 3 p.m. CEST, that means Paris, France, on Celebrate Your Way to Food Freedom. And if you're ready to overcome overeating and discover the secrets to staying motivated, achieving your success and experiencing true freedom around food, you don't want to miss out. I'll give you all the tips that will revolutionize your approach to food and will explore the power of celebration. I'm going to invite you to discover how celebration can be the key ingredient in your journey towards food freedom, keeping you motivated and inspired on your way to success. Imagine that. And I don't want, um, if you don't want to let uh, overeating hold you back any longer, then it's time to celebrate your way to food freedom. All you need to do is to register below to secure your spot. Remember, Tuesday, July the 11th at 3 p.m. CST, that is Paris, France. It's going to last around one hour. And I'm inviting you to check the time because your time zone may not be the French one. And what I usually use is worldtimebuddy.com to find out what 3 p.m. CST, Paris, is in your time zone so that you don't miss it out. If you're ready to invest in yourself, well, join me for this transformative webinar. Together, we'll celebrate our way to food freedom and create a world where nourishment, balance, and well-being thrive. 
to your success and freedom. Until then, have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye.